Um, obviously, a tremendous atmosphere in, in here today. Um, huge shout out to all the fans, specifically the ones, the students that spent overnight camping out. Um, you know, a great college basketball atmosphere. Uh, I thought two really good teams that both did things well, both did, did things that, um, you know, we'll both have to get better at. But um, really, the, the effort and the grit and the defensive following the game plan for the most part, I thought was really good. Um, you know, keeping them off the glass, which is, is hard to do. Some of it was, you know, hit Zach. Some of it was us not doing our job blocking out. Um, and those, you know, those couple possessions, those can be big as you come down the stretch. And then obviously the offensive efficiency. You know, I thought um, you know, three for 19. I'll go through the, the quality of the shots, but I thought, you know, we took too many jump shots, didn't attack. We did at times and we moved the needle, got to the free throw line, we're playing in the paint, doing a lot of good things, and then we go away from it. And then we come back to it, and then we go away from it. And, we, and you have to be consistent. Um, in those regards, uh, have constantly put pressure on the paint. When we did, I thought we got a lot of good things happen, and made things happen. Took care of the ball um, pretty well, and um, you know, so a lot of things we'll learn from this. I think this, when you're playing at this level, you you got to you have to check every box. You can't check three of five or five of seven. You have to be elite in in a lot of areas, and we weren't enough. And that's tonight or today, and that's you know credit to Purdue and how they played and they're obviously they're a really good team. I think we got a really good team and we got to get better. We got to get better in some of the simple things of efficiency that um, offensively decision making, shot selection, those things that can take us to another level. Questions? Michael up front. Purdue can really damage teams for the way that they shoot the three, I guess. Right. With the way that you guys defended the three, I mean, yeah. did you feel like... I thought we did a really good job. Had... A really good job. I mean, the one... Uh, we lost Jones once in transition in the second half. We were late on chasing a screen on him in the first half. Um, he got one from the top of the key or the wing in front of our bench. Um, I don't know where the other one came from. Who hit their other three? He got all three of them. I remember his third one. But I thought we did a good job of, of getting them off the line. And, and that's a precarious situation you're in because you're worried about the big fella inside too. And, um, I thought we did a good job when we were post trapping. We we got out of it quick. When we couldn't post trap based on the lineup they had on the floor, we we were able to you know keep enough pressure on Zach um, and also guard the three. And that's a you know like I said, that's what makes them a really good team is because they can hurt you in a lot of different ways. But um, yeah, a pretty good job from three point standpoint. If you hit a few of your own, uh, I guess you know is that the formula to beat this team? You know, kind of. Keep I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give away every secret. You know, you know. I, I, they're really complete. They got a lot of pieces. We have a lot of pieces. And but you know the the difference maker obviously is Zach. I mean that's just you can't replicate or simulate that. And uh, and when they need to you know, need a bucket, he hits a jump hook. You know, when they need a bucket, he gets an offensive rebound. Um, so. It's, uh, but I thought Braden Smith did some good things for him, especially in the first half. We, we got a little soft on ball screens, and he got comfortable coming off those. We got better at the end of the first half. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the challenge of playing a team so good. And, and, you know, they, they got a lot of pieces and a lot of – can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Back here. Uh, AJ was the only one to attempt a free throw until, like, the final seconds on a shooting foul. Uh, do you guys feel like you could have been more uh, aggressive at attacking the rim, or was that just – credit to Purdue for playing good defense without foul. Both. I mean, we have to be, regardless of our opponent, we have to do a better job of attacking and, and not settling for pull-up jump shots and, and early threes, um, moving the ball more, getting more touches from the five guys on the floor, moving the defense, lifting it. Um, times we did it really well. Um, you know, we were able to hit pocket passes on rollers to the rim. Steve got one. Tyler got loose on some of those. But also, at times, I thought we got jump shot happy and, and we've got a you know it, it's it's great when they're going in but it's fool's gold you know it's not gonna it's not gonna last and it's not gonna work over the long haul it's really good team so yes I think why we're not shooting enough free throws is because we're taking jump shots you're not gonna get fouled on on pull-up jump shots that are you know contested and you're likely not gonna make a high enough percentage of them to make it worth it
Greg, is it frustrating that you guys got 44 points in the paint, were able to score inside on 80 for the most part, but the perimeter shots aren't falling, and then some of the questionable shot selection? Well, I mean, that's part of the perimeter shots not falling. Falling, you know. You, I always evaluate quality. You know, what type of three did you take? What type of when did we take it? Was it contested? Did we move the ball? Had everybody touched it? Um, you know, there's times when you got to take the tough ones, but. Um, I'll go look through the 67, whatever it was, 60 some possessions, 67 for us, and grade those out and see, you know, a lot of a lot of good things, you know, but you have to have all good things if you want to be, you know, in, on the left hand side of the score against a really really good team. Well, Nick and then Jeff. Greg, Matt, Matt talked about how, you know, at times their defense helped off Tyler and he really made them pay. What kind of stood out? You know, with an impact, obviously scoring the ball game high twenty, but also creating kind of yeah. from that mid post with five assists. Yeah, five assists. I mean, he and he's. It, it's a credit to him because he's changed even through the course of this season. Changed his game some where we're not. Um, he's doing more punch driving. We're putting him in, in, in the with the ball in his hands more at the top of the key and and going some dribble handoff ball screen stuff. So it puts him in a in a position where he's running at the rim and not having to constantly, you know. Arm wrestle his way with his back to the basket. Now, he does some of that, but we, I think he's minimized some of that. And and obviously, you know, he he used his quickness and ambidexterity to, today against Zach to try to put him in, you know, get him keep him guessing about where he was and where he was. He moved real well without the ball, and he got on the glass with that six offensive rebound. So he was active when shots were were going up too, and um, you know, he played his butt off. Jeff, Greg, you mentioned settling for jumpers and shot selection at Nebraska. You mentioned it again today. I'm sure it was discussed between games. Um, when they're on yes. the court, you generally have some veterans on the court. Is it just up to them, someone to say, hey, we are not moving the ball well enough. Stop settling for jumpers. Let's attack. Yeah, I, I think they don't They don't always see the numbers right away. You know, I, 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 get, I see numbers, you know, if not every media timeout. Um, so maybe they don't quite see what's transpiring. Um, but yeah, it, it's discussed before games, in between games, during games. Um, but it's, you know, that's the the growth that we got to continue to help guys take is the understanding of um, how we continue to trend towards and grow towards playing winning basketball. And there's a difference between playing basketball and playing winning basketball. And we've got to continue to grow in those areas and help guys understand. You know, like I said, there's a time and a place. Um, and but against the the best of the best, you you got to be disciplined in those areas and and make sure as many possessions as possible are high quality. And then back then, Jim, and then on the stage, coach. La after last game, you called on Stephen Crow to be more aggressive. Today he had six shots, but when he's consistently getting doubled like the way Purdue played him today, how tough is it for not only for him but for the entire offense to kind of get going with the role that he has? Yeah, I, I think you know I think I'd still. You know, just looking back through the first half possessions, um, it wanted him to be more aggressive. I thought there was times when he wasn't double teamed, and he, um, I think he anticipated it coming, and it didn't come. And it wasn't always just a straight double team. They were they were digging, they were squeezing, um, they were flooding towards him a little bit. So whether he felt uncomfortable with where he was or what he could do with it, but you know, he he needs to continue to be. I know his passing is a is a great skill you know and he's and I've said before he's um, at times too unselfish and and that's you know but I again I trust the players to they're the ones playing I communicate what I see you know what film tells me and um, so yeah we need him to be more aggressive and you know but you know, it's also <clears throat> a credit to Purdue and the teams that have played them they're you know we got to find you got to take another step in our in our game in his game and and collectively um, sometimes we leave him on an island. We don't cut well enough away from the ball. Um, we don't put pressure on the back on the rim, so they can kind of stand. And um, so it, it's a combination. It's a it's a group effort to make that better. Jim. Greg, I don't know if this team needed a wake up call, but sometimes losing does that. It's a little easier to learn lessons after losses. Do you do you look at this week and say, hey, that maybe can happen, I, and drive that point home? Yeah, I think I think the losing a game always. You know, it, it gets your attention more, but I don't think there's anything that we have seen transpire in the last two games that we hadn't talked about before, and it's masqueraded by winning. 
You know, if you want to be at the highest level, you want to play championship basketball, you have to be on point and and you can't get away with you can't against some teams. You know, you can get away with shot selection, you can get away with being loose with the ball, you can get away with not defensive rebounding well enough. Uh, um, but that and that's the you know, the challenge to this group is like, hey, now we know what we need to get better at and, and we've taken a lot of steps and, and we've gotten better. Um, we want to Let's, I want this thing to push it farther, push it more, and and that's um, that's on all of us to help these guys get out of their comfort zone. The way you're going to get out of your comfort zone is it, you have to be held accountable. You know that if you want to play and do the things that we talk about and what we want to do here, you have to um, has to be uh, uh, really, and it's hard. It's hard. Winning at a high level is really hard, but the pain and regret is hard too. If you don't hold them accountable, if you don't keep pushing them out of their comfort zone, um, and sometimes, sometimes losing or taking a bump gets you out of your comfort zone a little faster. You kind of cruise in it when you're winning, you know. And maybe the lessons aren't as hard or aren't as um, direct. Um, but if you, like I said, to, to these guys want to be a great team, um, we see where we're a little short. We, we got to fill in those gaps and, and get better. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, regarding the last couple sequences down on the baseline there, from your perspective, what did you see? What were the guys telling you that they saw versus what was the really call? I'm not going to really comment. Um, I, I don't. I'll look through the film, and if there's anything that, you know, was different than what was called, you know, I'll, I have channels that I can communicate that with. But, you know, those guys have a hard job. I mean, that's that was a physical. You got grown men beating the hell out of each other, and it's just a hard, fast. I mean, guys are bigger, faster, stronger. Um, it's a hard game to def to officiate, um, you know, and. It's easy always to, to make the call when you can see a replay, you know, or you think you see what you saw. Um, but no, I'm, it's um, officiate isn't why we lose games. I mean, I, I'm not going to fall into that trap and blame them. Those three guys are really good officials, and um, you know, I, I don't know if they missed uh, somebody stepping in bounds or out of bounds or. That's, there's there's enough other things that'll keep me up on this sheet other than whether a guy stepped in bounds or out of bounds enough tonight. So, Mark, you had a question. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead, Mark. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts. Um, second half, Stephen got into a little foul trouble. We avoided that in the first half. What impact, if any, do you think you know that you know, being in and out can have? Well, I mean, that's he, he's going to take a break anyway because trying to move around seven four, three hundred plus is takes a toll. I thought Nolan, other than he got caught once on a little fake cross screen and got um, they threw the lob over the top of him in the second half. I thought Nolan battled. You know, he's you look at Zach's an experienced big post player. Nolan's a freshman that's going to get bigger. Um, so that's a great experience for Nolan. Um, and you know, I never have to worry about the fight that Nolan brings and the, how he competes. Um, but, you know, for Steve, we, we talked about trying to avoid those fouls or avoid the unnecessary ones. There's going to be some just because of the the mosh pit that the lane and, and the post play presents itself. There's going to be some, and specifically with Zach, he puts you in a lot of tough positions. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that – I mean, he still played – 28 minutes, so I wouldn't anticipate even being not in foul trouble that that number would change a whole lot. Two more questions, and then we're going to back, and then we'll get, end with Michael. Greg Tyler was saying that he feels like the team is right there, being neck to neck against one of the best teams in the country. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think we're one of the best teams in the country. I mean, I think there's, you know, there's and there's parity across college basketball. Um, and I've seen a lot of them now and played against a lot of the non-conference ones. Matt has as well. Um, I told him before the game, we were talking, you ever wonder what we talk about? I said, hey, neither one of us scheduled hard enough. You know? Um, it was tongue-in-cheek. 
like most, both of us overdid it. But um, I, I think that's what you want, and, and you want to, you know, play at a high level and compete with the best, with the goal that you want to be the best. You know, it's not just about playing with them. You want to, you want to conquer them. And we've had some unbelievable battles over the, you know, twenty plus years. And you go back to Katie and Dick, and um, you know, it's been two programs that I think do it the right way. Um, they both are blue collar, hard hat, lunch pail programs that that get the most out of their players, play hard. Um, Matt does a great job there. He does it the right way. He's a great mentor or a um, representative of our league on a national level because he's on a lot of the national committees. And, you know, so it's a competition at its highest level is very rewarding. It can be very painful um, as today is, but it's rewarding. And now, you know, we got to get better before we get to mid-March and see him again. Michael, final question. Uh, Greg, you kind of alluded to the fact that the shot selection isn't new. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess, how do you teach players to notice that within the game flow before you get them in a timeout? Well, you, you show film, you know, and you show the time, score, how many did the ball touch mul multiple sides. Um, are we in a rhythm? Are we not in a rhythm? Are you feeling it? Are you not feeling it? You know, I'll let a few heat check shots go when shots before that have gone down. But when we're heat checking and we haven't gotten any heat, then we can't heat check, you know. Um, so it's just it's a growing process. But I, at the same time, I don't want guys to lose aggressiveness. So it's a fine – you balance that. I still want them attacking. I still want them looking to score. But how we're doing it has to – has to, uh, coming about it. Um, and if you're on a roll, you got a heater going, I'll let a few, let a few fly. But when you don't, and we're not as a team on a roll, then we got to dial that back and, and fine-tune what we're what our decisions are.